Good morning, everyone. On uh, behalf of VIV Worldwide, let me please uh, welcome all our attendees to today's webinar. Uh, also, a special welcome to all our speakers who will be guiding uh, you through uh, all the challenges in the Uganda poultry industry. Furthermore, let me please also extend my special thanks to the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands uh, for uh, Uganda and Rwanda and also La Rive International BV, who were uh, helping us uh, in the organization of this webinar. Uh, let me please introduce the moderator chairman of uh, today, Mr. Ru Mulder, the secretary general of the World Poetry Science Association, also known as WPSA. Ru, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Diana. Well, as mentioned, my name is Roel Mulder from the World Poultry Science Association, and uh, what, that's one of the oldest uh, scientific associations in the world. And as, as scientific associations, we have members in all continents, so also in Africa. Nevertheless, we are uh, looking for uh, more uh, possibilities to uh, express our mission or vision or whatever to disseminate knowledge on all aspects of poultry production which whether it is small poultry family poultry farming or whether it is a highly intensified uh, let's say automated uh, poultry production well we always are very happy to get the opportunity from the viv uh, organization to help with whatever meetings organization worldwide and also now for this uh, occasion for poultry africa we are very uh, happy to uh, well play our part in uganda we have a branch well one of the 80 national branches of wpsa and on this moment i know that some of them are uh, attending uh, the webinar and i hope that we will uh, use this webinar for a very fruitful cooperation in the next well years well we have a busy program so i do not want to speak too much uh, and i think it's better now to start with our keynote uh, speaker which is uh, dr steven birungi and to introduce him a little bit is uh, well he has a very long experience in the pharmaceutical uh, industry and uh, well he is founder and also current the managing uh, well director of alpha sun but i'm sure he will explain that to you it's always nice to see that in this uh, industry people with a veterinary background which he has and also with a uh, mba uh, let's say certificate uh, well are active for business development and that's also in his cv you can see that he has very much a lot of well business approaches business activities initiatives to further develop the, for the further development of the industry in african countries and i think dr birungi the floor is yours yeah thank you very much uh, moderator i am pro, uh, i'm really happy to be here uh, welcome to uh, to our uh, uh, listeners, uh, viewers in out there, the farmers, poultry farmers. Uh, like uh, I've been introduced, I, uh, uh, my name is Steven Birunji. Birunji is always difficult for the European uh, friends, uh, but Steven will do. I'm a vet surgeon by profession, but uh, like you have said, I have, uh, uh, have some qualifications in business. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, working for 22 years since I left university uh, in setting up uh, small businesses and growing them uh, into uh, media. And my story is similar to the story of the farmers out there, poultry farmers. Uh, why we are here is uh, critical uh, for the farmer to understand that uh, while they may be struggling with some challenges, 
they may be struggling with some things not going well. They should remember that their poultry unit, their poultry farm, their poultry enterprise is actually a business. And uh, this business needs to thrive with the support of stakeholders. So it is on this uh, note that I thank VIV. Uh, of course, Madam Diana has been uh, working in the background with us for bringing all these stakeholders and bringing this talking point uh, for the farmers to get knowledge. And uh, in my next eight or so minutes, I'm going to make the case why this is important and why a farmer who is struggling or the farmer who is doing well out there, uh, poultry farmer, <clears throat> can uh, even do much better if they uh, they, they hook up uh, onto this gravy train we are calling VIV today. And uh, it is a profound humility that I appreciate the work done. Uh, this post trail road show, I attended the one in Chigali about two years ago as a keen participant. And I saw uh, what doors could be opened by just this interaction and networking. So this webinar uh, for farmers out there should really grab this opportunity with uh, both hands and uh, get on this uh, economic gravy train. I'll start by describing uh, a Ugandan poultry farmer because the history has not been very good. Uh, the history was, pre was really characterized by poor feeding. Uh, this is, will be elaborated by uh, Dr. Sewagude but it has been characterized by poor work methods. It has been characterized by small holder where people were no more than 100 chicken at a time, 50 to 100. Now we are talking of farmers who are doing 10,000. Uh, the average stock size, flock size is uh, going into 2000 today. And uh, that's why Uganda is already boasting of 40 million chicken and above. So uh, what is in it <clears throat> for the farmer? The poultry farmer out there uh, needs to understand that uh, uh, poultry as an enterprise, uh, when you look at uh, uh, time of getting their old chicks, and I'm happy Lariv is listening in and on, the, on board, their old chicks, uh, we're talking about feed, uh, all the inputs you need feed, uh, water, uh, you're talking about, to, of course, the medicines, that is my specialty, and the professional touch, that is the veterinarian. The farmer out there uh, should know that uh, you, it is upon, upon us as a farmer uh, to pick uh, what uh, stakeholder you need on board, what partner you need on board. And uh, the veterinary medicines, have been a big issue because we have had three challenges. One, we have had uh, farmers will bear witness with me that uh, we have had fake medicines on the market, counterfeit medicines, substandard medicines, and these have led to death of, of birds. Uh, we have had, uh, of course, uh, uh, hen days lost for those who are doing eggs because uh, you have a situation where if chicken are sick, they will not give you, uh, you know, the lay you need. So the issue of medicines is not just for making the birds live, but getting the right medicines and uh, making sure that these medicines are timely, they have the right quality, and uh, then they go with the package of the feeds. That's why our partnership with the uh, Dr. Selgude and Trow Nutrition uh, is very important that you get the right feed, you, right, you get the right advice, and then uh, my last point, which I'm going to dwell on more for two minutes, is what is the mathematics uh, of business for poultry farmer? A poultry farmer who is keeping 1,000 birds, what is the mathematics looking at all these stakeholders I've talked about, the vet, uh, the input provider and us, the medicines. There is a responsibility for each of these stakeholders. One, we need the right, the farmer to have the right 
the old chick which will provide because a, ch a chicken or a chick is like a factory if you get the wrong type of the old chick it will not rare it into giving you what you need so uh, a chicken is like a factory for the farmer in their business uh, two uh, the mathematics uh, of the chicken people have been saying you know you pump us a lot of information uh, how to make sure the uh, the sunlight is right the ph is right the amount of water is right uh, we are talking about the management but nobody gives the idea to the farmer that if you're doing all these things right and the health right what does it mean in the actual money terms uh, for, 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 for the farmer uh, in terms of treating your birds timely. One of the things uh, we have established as a company, Alpha Sun Uganda, is that uh, farmers on average by using the wrong medicines uh, or using them in an non-rational way, they are losing up to 40% of their value of utility financial utility, economic utility. Because uh, if you are looking at uh, 305 uh, eggs for one chicken for a year, and uh, you are talking about 40% of that, you are really talking a big loss. So uh, our view as Alpha Sun Uganda is to make a partnership with all these people, these stakeholders, and we provide to the farmer the right medicine and in a timely way through the value chain so that uh, when an animal is sick, uh, is treated just the right amount of medicine. It is strange coming from me, who is a manufacturer of medicine, to say use little as little medicine as possible and do all the other things which we tell you, uh, proper feeding, uh, proper uh, uh, sunlight, uh, proper water, all these things. So we are having an issue of abuse of medicines and we are here as a company to help the poultry farmer reduce uh, this abuse of medicine, pumping chicken with medicine, cocktail of medicines, you find poultry uh, farmers are like, uh, uh, they are like, uh, uh, you know, a stockist of medicine, their cupboard is full of medicine. This should stop and all of us as VIV participants should hammer this medicine I mean, should hammer this me 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 uh, message so that there is rational use of medicine so that we avoid uh, resistance. We avoid, the, of course, you know, the crossover to human because if people are not uh, observing uh, uh, with the draw uh, periods for the chicken, then the, the farmer, if they, they take an egg which is less with the residual antibiotics, then we may have issues uh, of resistance to, to drugs. We already have uh, bugs which are resistant to multiple antibiotics. So I'm here to preach the medicine, uh, to, to preach the medicine fine, because I want to sell to you poultry farmers the medicine, but I also want to preach uh, the rational use of the medicine so that now as Viv, as we move towards Kigali, we shall paint the picture uh, in tangible monetary terms, how using less medicines and doing all the other responsible practices, best practices we preach, uh, like you'll see in the next uh, presentation, uh, how a farmer then makes more money and the uh, productivity becomes uh, a reality. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my 10 minutes are up. You are 10? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this uh, inspiring speech, uh, Stefan. I, I think it, it, overall that the other speakers will speak on that as well, and we will have questions on this, I'm sure. It's all about competitiveness and about how to uh, make uh, a farm, uh, well, at least a little bit profitable but also to make, an, uh, let's say, uh, a good use of uh, ingredients, of good use of pharmaceuticals and so on. Thank you very much for this. And I think we continue with the uh, next speaker. 
because I think several of the issues you raised uh, will be covered by the next uh, presentations. And the, the next speaker is uh, Dr. Buland. I hope I can pronounce it correctly, but otherwise I will just make it Buland. Tanil Dizi. Uh, and it's quite good. I, well, I, well, he is, uh, let's say, the, the regional of the international commercial manager of ROS in the Middle East and uh, Africa. And he has a very long experience uh, as well in the field of, uh, well, health. And of course, he also works with the construction company, equipment industry. So he knows about production in many forms and many faces. Uh, well, I think the floor is yours. Thanks, Joel. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, like Joel introduced me, my name is Bülan Tanyılıze. Uh, I'm the commercial manager of Aviagen for Middle East and Africa. Today, I will try to give you some information, very short information about my company and how we service and operate in Africa, in Uganda, uh, from technical and wet weather point of view. So uh, in Aviagen, our mission is to be the world's preferred supplier of quality breed, broiler uh, breeding stock. And our vision is to play a leading role in feeding future generations by providing quality broiler breeding stock to produce a healthy and sustainable source of protein. In the recent years, uh, our CEO introduced our core values of the company. I will not go through them uh, in deep, but there are seven uh, core values for the company, which are and you know, for our uh, people as well. Uh, that's positive attitude. We are customer focused, we are team oriented, respectful, uh, looking after continuous improvement, integrity, and caring. Uh, Aviagen as a company is privately owned by the uh, EW Group, which is a German group. Uh, it's a family owned business, which is founded in 1928. Uh, in EW Group, there are more than 16,000 people working worldwide. Uh, EW Group has uh, companies in uh, 45 countries, and the core businesses are animal genetics. The group is operating in poultry and fish business. Uh, I will talk about Aviagen on the broiler breeding side, but I also want to highlight here EW Group owns uh, Lohman layers. Uh, Highline layers and h and layers as well. And in the fish business, we have Aquagen company, which has uh, fish breeds and selling globally. Uh, we are also, the group is also in health business, uh, Vaxinova. Uh, I think it's heard by many people in the industry producing vaccines. And uh, we have companies producing uh, SPF Kleenex for vaccine industry. And in animal nutrition, uh, EW Nutrition is also an active company working uh, globally. So if you look a little bit deep into the, the Aviagen group, we can say we have uh, three uh, parts of the business. The first one is the commercial chicken breeding stock. Under this part, we have uh, three breeds, which are Arbor Acres, Indian River, and Ross. These are uh, sold and serviced globally. We also have Roven Range, which is a, a slow growing bird, especially used in Europe, and speciality males uh, generally introduced in uh, USA. And recently, a couple of years ago, Hubble, Hubbard is also joined to the Aviagen Group, but they are a, a standalone company, completely operating separately to the other three breeds that Aviagen has. Uh, the second part is the turkeys. Uh, uh, we have Nicholas, BUT. Uh, these are well known by the market uh, and also operating in uh, commercial turkeys business. And the last one is CWT Farms. It's based in the US and they are trading hatching eggs globally. So if you look at the global uh, uh, white feathered chickens market, you will see here the, the markets for 2020, we estimated around 582 million. These are the parent stocks sold globally. Um, 
And Asia is the largest market. And uh, today it's the fastest developing market. But the good news from this slide is Africa is the second fastest growing market. And uh, obviously it has big expectations from African region because there is a big potential, high population with low consumption. So we can see the market will be growing in Africa in the next, uh, next uh, years. And this is our breeding structure of chickens. Uh, why I put this, uh, I just want to highlight here, you know, the genetic improvement and pedigree selection is, uh, is the core business for my company. So we develop the chickens for the markets and then we start multiplying them at GGP, GP levels and then selling parent stock to the customers. It's converted into broilers and going to processing and onward. The, the process of genetic development to the chickens to become uh, commercial is taking four years. And Aviagen is investing in the first three years of this business. It's a very expensive uh, a business to invest in. And I, write, I want to highlight Aviagen has invested uh, $500 million in the last five years uh, for, the, uh, for the business. That's very important uh, for the industry. And again, a quick look at the genetic selection criteria. In 1960s, what the genetic developers are looking for was number of eggs and live, of, live, weight, of, live weight of the broilers. But today, it's completely different. It's much more diverse. And uh, our geneticists are uh, looking at more than 40 traits in the chickens. This is thanks to the technology used in the, uh, in the company. Uh, today, we have a very limited time. And I hope one day we can bring our geneticists here and they can show you how we develop chickens, how we, what kind of technologies we are using, because Aviagen is, a, is the leading company developing technologies, use of technology, let's say, in the industry. And uh, distribution is one of the most important part of our business. Uh, it's important to every customer, I think, globally. Uh, but I just want to highlight here, uh, you know, uh, Aviagen has different production bases uh, globally. First of all, we, we have two parallel running uh, pedigree uh, operations one in the US and one in the UK, okay? And then we have seven GGP, great grandparent uh, production facilities in six continents. So GGPs are in the US, in Brazil, in, in the UK, in South Africa, in the African continent. We have India, Australia, and New Zealand. And the others, other production bases you, have, you are seeing are all GP operations and also parent stock hatcheries uh, located globally. Again, one thing that I want to highlight here, which I will mention a little bit more in the coming uh, slides, uh, Aviagen East Africa is uh, just uh, introduced a couple of months ago. I, I think it was in March. Uh, and now Aviagen is investing in Africa, especially in East Africa for the uh, security of supply. And this is our global distributor network. We are not only distributing ourselves, but we also have grandparent distributors in different locations. And the, the dots here are showing uh, different GP operations uh, distributed around the country, uh, uh, around the globe. Uh, the red ones showing the Aviagen offices and the others are uh, the GP distributors for the Aviagen breeds. And when we come to uh, TMEA region, which is we are working for, this is Turkey, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, we are present in uh, more than 30 countries. And in Sub-Saharan Africa, we are operating in 25 countries. This means we are actively uh, selling product, shipping, and servicing the customers in 25 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. And as I said, Aviation East Africa, this is just established in March, 2021. Uh, it's a greenfield project. Uh, it will be based in Tanzania and uh, there will be grandparent farms and a parent stock hatchery. Uh, this will help us to supply high quality breeding stock to the current and future customers in East African uh, part of the world. Uh, 
So the investment in new facilities will ensure the security of supply, which is the most important thing that we realized after you know the AI outbreaks, especially this year, is very very common uh, all over the let's say Europe and Africa and Asia everywhere, and also the COVID nineteen uh, problems. So security of supply becomes a, a major uh, priority for the industry. So uh, being closer to the PS customers, that will allow us to track the to track the chicks. Uh, so they will be shipped by road, not uh, by flights. Two, I think this will bring two major advantages. I think there will be improved chick quality, and also the cost to the final customer will be less because today airlines are charging huge amount of money to to carry the chicks, especially after the COVID nineteen with the reduced number of flights. This is a major problem for the customers increasing their production costs. So this will play a major role in achieving our sustainability goals and enhancing our welfare standards. This is also good for the chicks because from time to time we are seeing some issues with the, you know, uh, the, the chick quality because of the flights, temperatures at the airports during the flight. Uh, we believe the new project will just uh, get rid of all these issues we are having. So uh, hopefully the project will be operational next year by, um, uh, let's say, July, August time, mid-year. Uh, and we will keep the industry more, uh, informed about the developments about this project. And Aviagen in Uganda, uh, we are operational in Uganda for several years, uh, especially after COVID. Uh, we had, yeah, I mean, significant increase in parent stock sales into Uganda. All major customers, I will not mention any names here, but now there are several lost flocks on the ground in Uganda. Uh, we, we really managed very well in terms of supply during AI and COVID-19 restrictions. Um, uh, Europe was closed for uh, parent stock shipments to Uganda, but we successfully shifted our uh, hatch in, or let's say production to Turkey. And now we are shipping uh, chicks, uh, parent stock chicks from uh, from Turkey to Uganda. Uh, Aviation East Africa will also improve the security of supply. It will be much more easier because of tracking ease of uh, transport. Let's say today the, the the Ross breeders and broilers showing a very good performance in the market. Our customers are really happy with that, and we have a continuous tech support with full team of experts, which I will mention again in the forthcoming slides. So our uh, approach to the health issues is a bit holistic. I mean, we don't look at it as only from veterinary point of view, but the performance uh, of the bird, we believe it's a combination of management, nutrition, and you know the, the veterinary uh, inputs and biosecurity as well. This is so important. So keeping this in mind, we have, uh, you know, uh, several technical people, experts within our teams, but these four people are the key four people uh, for the for service in Uganda. Dr. Javier, he, he is from Spain. Uh, he's based in Spain. He is providing veterinary support to the customers. Uh, Rian, he is a South African gentleman. He lives in South Africa and uh, he is providing technical service. Uh, Mr. Xavier, Dr. Xavier, he is again from Spain and he's a nutritionist. He is providing or supplying uh, support, nutritional support to the customers. And finally, Dr. Uh, Tolga Erkush, he is a Turkish gentleman and he's our incubation specialist uh, helping the customers in Uganda. When it comes to veterinary, uh, veterinary support, I think the most important part is prevention. I'm not a you know, a veterinarian by profession, but for so many years I'm working in poultry, all I heard is prevention is much more cheaper than you know, uh, treatment. So what we need to do, uh, we have to ensure the best conditions for the bird in terms of management, nutrition, and uh, hygiene conditions. Also, we have to have very good monitoring uh, for the productive uh, parameters. So we have to keep an eye on performance and health status of the flocks. Uh, vaccination strategies, we have to have our vaccination programs. Our experts, doctors are helping the customers. We are not designing, I have to highlight here, we are not designing uh, 
a, a vaccination program for the customers, but we help them uh, to optimize their, uh, their vaccination uh, program. So you can contact us anytime and ask questions. And also the same with a uh, vaccination. Uh, we help our customers in terms of biosecurity programs they have. Uh, we help them to design it, uh, how to audit it, and how to monitor their biosecurity programs. So the, you can ask support from our experts on these areas. But of course, sometimes it's not, uh, a, I will not say preventable, but you have a disease. So in case of a disease, how we deal with it, how we work with our customers. Uh, so we are dealing with big populations, we, uh, with chicken flocks. So uh, we look at uh, the percentage of the affected uh, birds. Is it significant? We need this information. Uh, and at what age it happens and how it evolved, we also require this information. Uh, any kind of detail information, uh, it's very valuable for us because it helps us, our experts, to diagnose the issues. Necropsies and sampling from the representative birds, it's important because these are, you know, uh, sent to the labs and information used for, again, diagnosis. And any kind of pictures, videos of the lesions or the farm or from the farm is also valuable for the experts. So it helps them to, to support the customers in terms of uh, veterinary issues. And the rule out list, of course, uh, we are looking for the most probable cause. And then we create the action plan. We implement the treatments. But of course, you don't stop at that point. Preventive measures are very important for, to ensure the problems do not occur again. So uh, last couple of slides, uh, I just want to talk about the advantage of being an Aviagen uh, customer. So this is a, a very a successful uh, company, uh, more than 85 years of uh, history, and we are growing into the future with the new investments we are doing now. Uh, we have strong global brands and we are offering wide range of products which suits different markets and different customer needs on a global scale. So we mentioned here, highlighted in the presentation, security of supply is becoming more and more important to, I mean, especially COVID-19 and avian influenza showed us. So we are running uh, parallel ped pedigree programs on two different continents and we have multiple production facilities across six continents. Again, this is helping our customers to have their chickens on the right time uh, and in the right numbers, uh, which is also important. Our uh, top management and the geneticists are committed to improving the global product, uh, protein supply chain. This is also important. The company is very much dedicated to the industry. So uh, there is a company-wide commitment to health, welfare, and biosecurity. I think the health of the flocks are starting from our side, and when we have to deliver you uh, healthy birds, which is very important. So we have non-stop monitoring and execution of key programs to ensure consistent security of our supply. So global customer support, we mentioned about four gentlemen service in Uganda, but we have several other experts also supporting these people and also servicing the rest of the world. And we have a long-term commitment to poultry breeding and investing in the future of our customers. I just want to thank you. I couldn't uh, watch the time, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't exceed my time. My name is here, my phone is here, and my email is here. Please, please feel free to contact at any time. We will be happy to help you and assist you with your flocks. Thank you very much for the opportunity as well. Uh, I just want to hand it over back to uh, Royal. Thank you, uh, Bulland, for your uh, presentation. Well, you were a little bit over time, but okay, uh, there is no clock uh, in, in your uh, screen, I think. But okay, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, in the meantime, we got a lot of questions for you, but uh, we will uh, continue with the question and answers after the last presentation. Uh, so that's also good for our uh, participants to know that we will try to answer all questions there. 
Well, our next speaker is, well, again, I hope I, I pronounce the name correctly, but otherwise it's just Dr. Samuel, Samuel Sevagude. Yeah. And uh, he is, uh, well, born and raised in Uganda as he writes on his uh, CV. That's, uh, again, he is veterinarian on background, but also he has uh, some qualifications uh, in other fields, poultry management, and I was uh, surprised to see agricultural production chain management. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether uh, I know exactly what, what is meant with that, but anyway, he has a lot of uh, interest uh, besides just veterinarian uh, science. And well, what I know from his CV, he has a lot of uh, experience in consulting as veterinarian, and he is currently he is the managing distributor of Trau Nutrition in uh, Uganda. And uh, Samuel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mouda. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Great, so uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Samuel, uh, my background is vet. Uh, I work for Trial Nutrition uh, uh, BV in Uganda as a, as a technical sales manager. Uh, and just to explain a little bit, Mr. Mulder, uh, value chains, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's basically um, how products move from you know, from from input supply to through production all the way to the end uh, of to consumption and how that function is 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 is, is an interest uh, for me and and I have some qualifications in that. Um, but um, today I want to. I've been given just ten minutes, so I'll try as much as possible to uh, fit into that. I want to talk about um, how. Who, feed and water affect poultry health and then how we can uh, we can uh, we can manage that uh, using products and, and services that we offer for from trial nutrition or from nutreco which is a, a bigger organization and um i want to talk about three things of course uh, as you see them on the screen i want to talk about the health challenges related to feed and to talk about the water challenges that are related to feed and how to manage uh, both of that. And um, so to dive in uh, very quickly, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some pictures of really some of the situations that happen on people's farms that are related to those challenges. First with feeds, um, in, in, on a number of farms, we, we see scenarios like that where birds have, um, you know, uh, feet uh, that are swollen, uh, foot pad uh, kind of swellings. And that's also common uh, in, in broiler farms, but we see it in layers as well. And it's very related to feed. Um, we have that. Um, loose dung, um, especially when the feed is not well balanced, you have excess protein or you have too much salt. Uh, things like that can be pictures like that could be happening on the floor of a of a chicken house. We have chicks, you know, that have vitamin deficiencies, and then they, they can present like that. So sometimes we see that on people's farms. Um, of course, worms can also come along with feed, and then you see it as you walk within the chicken house. You see those white little things uh, wriggling around, and, and mostly coming from ingredients like let's say fish meal that are not well prepared or that are prepared in places where um you know the the that are dirty and and, and there's also let's say yeah human excreta or excreta from other animals that have eggs or worms then we have uh, pictures like that where chickens are losing feathers on certain parts of the body and and of course this is a typical picture in in uh, what we call feed meals in uganda so you see how they're preparing the feed everything poured down and they're running it through those uh, two machines one is a hammer meal um, and another one is a mixer but the level of hygiene in in this far in these uh, uh, small feed meals can also present challenges to the feed that farmers use 
Now, when you go to water, um, some pictures like this can be seen. So this is an open well. And uh, this is a picture I took from a farm um, somewhere in central Uganda. And, and uh, what you see is a pipe that draws water from the well. And, and this was going straight into, uh, into tanks and then to the chicken houses. And, and uh, I brought a picture, that's how it looks like. Um, the pipe, as you can see in the middle ground near the right. And, and, and of course, there are other animals as well trying to live within this. And so you see a frog. So if the frog is coming with disease and the water is already having bacteria in it and all sorts of, of other contaminants, then everything else, everything is just going straight into, into the, 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 the chicken house and, and into the digestive system and causing problems uh, with diarrhea, with bacteria, with infection and, and distorting uh, the process of digestion. And then we have uh, equipment, some of the equipment, yeah, because of, you know, such dirty water getting in there with bacteria and you have the buildup of biofilm in the pipes, you know, in the drinking systems, you have pictures like this. So this is a, a picture of a drinker, you know, opened up in the upper part and, and you can see the, 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 the biofilm, that combination of, of organic matter and bacteria. In, in, inside and these are some of the things that constantly keep bringing disease into the flock and you hear farmers complaining of you know I, I treat and my birds you know uh, get better but then there is a resurgence of disease and some of this comes from here and that's a closer look uh, picture of, uh, of, of of you know how some of these uh, water containers look like and you can imagine all these um, kind of dirt and bacteria and everything else that is uh, not good for chicken just ends up within them, distorting digestion and causing diarrhea, wastage of nutrients, and also disease, which costs money to treat. So I want to dive in a bit in how to manage these challenges. And I want to talk about feed first. So with feed, um, we know um, uh, feed if the quality is not right then you'll have a challenge you'll have a challenge of course of production but also can present challenges of um, you know of health and um, uh, when you look at quality of ingredients as far as health is concerned we are we are we some of the solutions that we have as, 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 as a trial nutrition for example is that we 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 provide analytical tools um, to help assess quality of ingredients so that the right ingredients are provided and, and, and by the animal, I mean to the animals. So we're supporting farmers with, with feed analysis. So we have mobile, uh, for example, within Uganda, we have some mobile and uh, NIR machines for anal and which we use to support um, uh, farmers to analyze feed ingredients, but also to analyze um, um, uh, complete feed. So we are able to advise and, and also give them real-time solutions on, on how they can improve the quality of the feed. And that way, it, you, for example, the balance of the feed can be improved so you don't have excesses of protein and having loose um, um, you know, uh, feces that end up uh, you know, uh, dampening the house and, and leading to bacterial infection. Um, we also give advice, of course, on top of that. Um, uh, when we look at feed quality as well, and as I talked a bit about the balance of the feed, so you want to have uh, the right balance of proteins, uh, carbohydrates or energy, uh, vitamins, minerals, you want to have a good balance of that so you don't have excesses. And, and on that, as a, as a way of helping farmers to deal with the problem, so we provide um, uh, formulations or mixings or rations that are well balanced, that are produced by some of our leading experts in the Netherlands and that work with us. So we have a full team of nutritionists and advisors that give um, information that we use to support and, and, and provide very, very well balanced rations, formulations that are optimal for performance and, and then also um, good for uh, the pocket. And, and, and that is one of the services that we offer we also um, supply Hendrix concentrates. Um, the concentrates are just a fraction of feed. So we have concentrates where uh, farmers can just add a maize and maize bran, for example, for broiler feed. And then they can mix it together with a Hendrix concentrate of, of broiler 25%. And, and then you have a complete feed. 
and and this is is providing uh, has helped to provide uh, solutions in especially um, contamination of feed, for example, because in the past we've had issues with uh, where we were uh, most rations were based on on especially protein was coming in from animal protein from um, fish meal of what we locally call mukene. And that alone, yeah, we, we had seen and we always see comes out with a lot of problems, including you know impurities like sand and, and soil, but also um, uh, with bacteria, salmonella and everything else, uh, bacterial plus, of course, even worms. So if we, when we, we through our constraints, we're promoting plant-based uh, ingredients. So we will limit as much as possible the level of contamination with, with, with these uh, uh, feed solutions. The other one, of course, uh, uh, another way in which you can manage health of, of, of birds uh, through feed is feed safety. And, um, and through feed safety, we're mostly looking at limiting the effects of, of mycotoxins in, uh, in feed. And 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 uh, this we are we are doing through um, we provide um, uh, analytical uh, services for mycotoxin. So we have tools. We have uh, tools that provide uh, results. Most of our tools provide instant result. You know, instant results that you can have within, let's say, less than 10, 15 minutes. So we have uh, mycotoxin analysis tools that we provide. Um, to, with some of our customers, but also to the general public, we offer this service and this helps. So you can analyze the feed ingredients, you can analyze uh, even complete feed and advise this user of um, just about how much um, uh, you know, contamination is in and what you can do to solve that problem. So, and of course we have uh, products, we have toxin binders, we have toxin binders that bind mycotoxins, making them unavailable for you know, affecting the birds and causing disease. But we also have toxin binders that do beyond that, supporting the immune system and, and also improving, uh, detoxifying the body and, 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 and supporting uh, the, the health of the bird as well. So we have those products uh, with the name of uh, Celco uh, Toxo range. And of course, uh, limiting bacterial contamination um, in, in the feed. We also have organic uh, acid blends that we use in, that we provide for our, our customers, put in the food to control salmonella and all the other type of bacteria that could um, present uh, health ch challenges to the bats. Um, a final slide uh, is on water. So water as well, we look at the quality of the water and we help farmers to, for example, um, assess the pH of the water because the pH of the water uh, um, affects the um, the um, you know the, the the thriving of bacteria. So if you if you if you have a pH that is less acidic, then you have more bacteria living in there. The more acidic you make it, the more uh, the less um, bacterial um, um, contamination you'll have. So we have tools that we use to support farmers to at least be able to know their, the pH of their water. And, and that way they are able to, uh, to, to fight infection. Then we look at also water safety. Uh, we, we also support farmers to limit bacterial contamination in their water. So we have a blend of organic acids that uh, also can be added in water. And this is a circle pH, a very good uh, product that gets, helps to get to reduce uh, most of the, the, the dangerous bacteria but at the same time also helps to improve digestion. So this is all I had for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Samuel, for your uh, interesting uh, presentation. Uh, well, it's uh, you are also not always uh, in time, but I heard the clock, so at least you have, uh, have tried to do this. <laughs> well, there are some questions for you later as well. Uh, and I think we, we go now to the next present, uh, presenter, which is uh, Mr. Freik Leiten. He is from Pancomatic uh, Group, and uh, he has a uh, he studied at the HAS, that's the University of Applied Sciences in Den Bosch, and he has a well a long year, maybe not twenty and more years, but at least uh, the last ten, eleven years, he has very much experience in poultry production, in broilers, breeders, layers. And also, uh, he has, a, let's say, done a lot of research. Well, he is now 
product manager for breeders and broilers at Vancomatic. So I will give you the floor and uh, I will say, tell us a little bit about the uh, broiler production chain, a strong approach, Frank. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Um, good morning, everybody. I hope you see my screen now. I think so, yes. Um, yes, welcome, everybody. Um, I want to uh, explain you something about the uh, broader production chain strong approach. And I, uh, uh, I want to give you a few tips on that, what you can use in the daily uh, uh, production facility. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, who introduced me already? My name is, uh, my name is Freek Leiten, product manager at uh, Vancomatic Group, responsible for our breeder products and uh, boilers. Working in uh, the Vancomatic family since uh, 2010. Um, working at Vancomatic Group. Vancomatic Group is an, uh, an, a company that is, uh, started 40 years ago by Mr. Cor van der Ven. He started in that time with uh, the first automatic uh, nest. In that time, it was already a very re revolutionary idea. Um, at this time, we, uh, uh, the five children of Mr. Cor van der Ven are now uh, uh, took over the company two years ago. So it's still a family owned company. As you can see here in, uh, in, in, the, in this uh, uh, picture, we have um, uh, four brands. One moment. Uh, we have Aero Supply is uh, our brand for, uh, for climate solutions like heat exchangers and uh, uh, emission reduction systems. We have Prison. Prison is our uh, uh, brand which we have our uh, egg packing machines. So uh, to, uh, to place eggs automatically in different trays. We have uh, Vagent. Vagent is our uh, breeder nest company. And we have Vancomatic, and Vancomatic uh, yeah, there's a complete housing solutions as well as transporting systems. So uh, enough about Vancomatic Group and myself. I'd like to uh, go in, uh, in the detail to the broader production chain. I uh, present you here an, uh, a simple graph of the production chain. Where we start with the breeding on the left side, where we want to produce clean hatching eggs. And we talk in, in, in this uh, way about uh, broader meat production. The hatcheries will go to the hatchery. At the hatchery, they will uh, incubate and they will have their chicks where we transport their chicks to the broader farm. And at the end, we want, we go to the processing plant where we slaughter the birds and we, uh, we make nice protein meat of them. That's what we all uh, want to achieve. And we at Vancomatic Group, when we look to this chain, we see in every step we can have losses. In the breeding part, you can have losses. And ideal, ideal you want to start with, uh, with 100 eggs. And you want to have 100 chicks at the end. But we know at every step we can make mistakes, we can have losses. And on every step, we always see and check what we can do better and more efficient. So in the breeding part, you can have losses. In the hatchery, you can have already losses at the broiler farm and also the way to the processing plant. And in this presentation, because uh, we can talk all day about it, we uh, only focus about uh, the detail in the breeding part, what you, could, what you can do there to make it more efficient and to prevent losses. And I want to tell a little bit about uh, the hedging and the broader farm part, what you can do there more, and what's also on that point very important. So starting with the breeding part, chick quality starts with egg quality. And what's important to keep in mind in the future, we see here an egg, and you think yeah, an egg is an egg. What's it different? We see here a dirty egg. And what is really important to understand, an, a dirty egg, a dirty floor egg is not a hatching egg. So we don't want to see this. We want to see clean hatching eggs. Why is it important? Um, when an egg is laid, an egg has the body temperature of an hen. So let's say uh, 40 degrees Celsius. It will cool down after it's laid. And during cooling down, um, the egg shell in, this, in, in, in the egg will be formed. That's because of the temperature difference, it will drop. We get under pressure in the egg. And that way, because the egg shell is spurious, the bacteria will suck inside. So you can clean the egg from the outside, but the bacteria are already inside. Um, 
This reason is very important that you produce clean hatching eggs. That's the first start to make good pro pro producing uh, day old chicks. That's the first step in, uh, in the broader production chain. So I mean, always, if it's a small farm of 100 breeders or a big farm of 40,000 breeders, produce clean hatching eggs, that's what counts. At the end, you will make the most profit out of that. Um, so the first tip on this is, so start with egg quality. I, uh, I show you here a uh, study. It's not done by, uh, by ourselves. It's a study of 2016. And what they did in this study, they compared uh, clean eggs to floor eggs. And they looked to the hatchability out of these eggs. So you see here the green bar that are the clean eggs. The red bar are the floor eggs. And what you see in this graph, you see the difference between the hatchability of our average 80%. So we see with clean hatching eggs, we see 18% more hatchability out of these eggs. Um, when you took that in an account in a, in, a, in a farm, and I took here an example of, an, uh, of a farm of 40,000 breeders, when you say they produce average 170 eggs, and you say I have 5% uh, uh, floral eggs or 3% floral eggs, so 2% difference, it costs you 80% Hatchability, that is on every flock, almost 25,000 tail chicks. So uh, if it's 1,000 breeders, it's, the calculation is the same, but the effect is huge. So we don't see only less hatchability. Also, uh, you see in this graph, they can hatch. You, you, you have hatching uh, chicks out of floor eggs, but they are contaminated. You see the quality of those chicks is less. So you, you have more second grade chicks as well. You have more mortality in the first week. Now our solution for that, uh, because we are a uh, supplier of uh, housing equipment, is uh, the Vahed nest. This is an uh, automatic uh, rollaway nest. Um, I don't go in details. I can explain what's the most important. You want to lay that the hen goes inside the nest and lay the egg. Because in the nest, we have a clean nest floor. When the egg is laid, it will roll automatically to the egg belt because the, the floor of the hen is on an, uh, on an inclination and you have a clean hatching egg. And that's where it all starts to produce good performing brother chicks. Now, the last eight years, we did uh, a lot of study on, uh, on the nest itself. What I told in the beginning, we, 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 we have the first automatic nest 40 years ago, but we see by genetic evolution, the, the broader breeder hen is getting more and more sensitive to perform and to find the nest space. So it's more and more important that everything in the house is correct. It's not only the nest, it is the layout in the house. So where you put the nest in the house, as well as the position of feet and drinkers, the lighting position, the sled width, it's all important for the ideal layout to get the maximum number of eggs inside the nest. And we, we, we really can help you to think for your situation what's the best solution to start with an automatic nest and to produce clean hatching eggs. The second uh, thing I want to explain, uh, on-farm hatching. And on-farm hatching is probably something new, but you never heard of. And I want to explain it in, uh, in, in global lines. We see well begun is half done in this uh, slide. And we see here two, two different processes. We see the traditional system and on-farm hatching. How it look like? We start with incubation. So the first 18 days, 18 days in the incubator. After that, we will candle the eggs and we transfer the, the incubated fertilized eggs to the next step. And there's the big difference. In the traditional system, uh, they will hatch in the hatcher. So incubation day 18 till 21. In on-farm hatching, what's different? We transport the eggs to the farm to the broader farm and we hatch the chicks over there. So the big difference is in this systems, transport chicks or transport eggs on the other end. Um, what is important in this, uh, we see here the uh, uh, chicks hatching in the cabinet. On the right side, we see chicks hatching on the farm. And this is something very revolutionary. We started already 15 years ago with this. It was an idea of a poultry farmer. Um, it's not my 
uh, goal for you today to say, okay, this is the best way to do it, but is to present you a different way of thinking. What we can learn out of this on-farm hatching. We see a lot of benefits with on-farm hatching compared to the traditional systems. Also here, uh, we, we uh, can tell a lot about it. We learn a lot about it. And we summarize in this slide, we see the first step, healthy lungs. So we see in on-farm hatching, we create optimal climate for the daily chick. We have a low CO2 level. We don't need to use formaldehyde because we have a lot of volume inside the house. So less chance on contamination. A really big important effect of on-farm hatching, they get direct access to feed and water. We don't need to transport chicks from the hatchery to the farm. So they have direct access to feed and water and they can start directly with development. And we know the uh, life of a brother is very short. In six weeks, they need to go to the end uh, weight. So everything in the start is really important to get the maximum potential out of it. So when they have direct S to feed and water, we see they can develop optimally. We see better uh, intestine development. The next thing we see is stress-free start. So we don't need to transport chicks, of, uh, chicks anymore. They hatch on the farm and they stay there the complete life. So they are directly S to the litter. They have a lot of space. There's no uh, noise inside uh, uh, the house as well. They have direct light. So we give them a stress-free start. And the last thing is very important. Inside a uh, hatchery, there's a lot of possibility chance on cross-contamination. So we have a lot of different batches of Dale chicks. They need to be handled over uh, uh, counters about separators. During transport, there are possibility time for cross-contamination. So because we don't transport live chicks, we see less risk on that. At the end, it's nice to see, we see a lot of benefit with on-farm hatching. We see more hatchability. So compared to a traditional system, we see 0.5 to 1% more hatchability. We see, because of better start, uh, less antibiotic use, because the health is on a higher status, so we need less antibiotics. On that way, we see also less mortality. Mortality is about 0.5% uh, less. The growth of the, 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 the chicks with, uh, with on-farm matching is higher. We see uh, at the end 50 to 80 grams higher body weight compared to the traditional system. Because the organ development, we see lower feed conversion ratio. And the last thing is welfare. Welfare is because we don't need to transport daily chicks and we have less stress for these birds. For this uh, um, on-farm hatching, we, we have different systems, like uh, you see on this slide. We have the Pacho. The Pacho is a multi-tier system. A multi-tier system where the chicks are placed on, uh, on litter. And on every level, we have the, the optimal climate conditions for the brothers during the complete life. So we can control the complete environment for the brothers to get the maximum out of it. For traditional houses, we see it here on the right. We have the extract. The extract is an, uh, a tool that makes it suitable to do on-farm hatching in traditional houses. What I want to show you with, uh, with on-farm hatching, that it's not only uh, the hatching egg is very important, but also how you uh, start up with your Dale chicks. And on-farm hatching is a uh, different way of doing that and to get the maximum potential out of the Dale chicks. So to summarize uh, my presentation, uh, gentlemen, the take home message, um, really important uh, when you see challenges, where do you want to improve the conditions in your production chain? You want to start with hatching eggs. You want to start to focus on uh, uh, the startup of your Dale chicks. Focus on your input material. So when you buy Dale chicks or when you buy hatching eggs, it's really important you know what they're coming off and the quality of that. Focus on your conditions at your water farm because the life is short, they grow very fast. So every hour, every day is really important at the water farm. Evaluate what's the most beneficial for your own situation to invest and ask always advice. So see what you want to improve and then choose where you want to invest. And at the end of all for today, always love your chickens to get the maximum out of it. I hope it was clear my presentation. I uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, I think it's now time for the discussion and the questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Frick, for your uh, clear presentation. Well, and I hope that we will have uh, several questions. But 
Okay, we are now to the question and answer session. Uh, we are a little bit over time, but uh, I think we still have a possibility to answer several of these uh, questions uh, already raised. And I think, uh, Dr. Stephen, uh, you were the first uh, to start uh, this morning. Uh, so you have waited the longest time for the questions. Because at the moment you started already, there was a question for you. And, and because you, you, you also mentioned uh, que uh, the possibility for fake, fake uh, type of medicines and so on. So one of the questions came to you was, how can a farmer be assured that, that they have the right medicine or the right drugs or that they are of good quality? And well, how can that be assured? because there is some doubt about it. Maybe you yes. can answer that. Yes, thank you. Uh, you can't be sure. All you can do is try to put measures uh, to prevent it. Uh, first of all, by providing information. Uh, some studies in the market have shown, unfortunately, farmers out there, that uh, uh, 50 to 60, some studies are even exaggerating it, we think, uh, saying even at some time 70% of uh, circulating inputs, medicines are, are fake uh, or counterfeit. You know, there are something being fake could be that uh, it could be uh, a legit drug, but maybe using misleading uh, uh, labels uh, misusing, misleading uh, dosage rates, and that could be uh, a reason for underperformance. So yes, uh, if a farmer uh, in poultry goes to the market, there is a chance that six times out of ten they go to the to the shop, they could get something fake in some form or manner. So there are measures we, as Alpha Sun Uganda, are putting in place. We are incorporating. Uh, 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 traceability practices where a farmer can check directly with us if this drug is from Alphasan. But also what we have found uh, is that uh, we are encouraging local manufacturing. We are manufacturers of these drugs, but we're encouraging other people to also uh, manufacture these drugs. For us, we are lucky that we partnered with the, uh, a Dutch company called Alphasan Holland and with support from the Dutch government, uh, we started local manufacturing. We, we have been a guinea pig in this area uh, with a lot of suffering, just like farmers are going through financial challenges. Uh, we had to go through them and now we are succeeding, we think. So our success will be the farmer success that we shall lead the way in championing good medicines and quality medicines. But what you need to do uh, you do three quick things. One, buy your medicine from a fully registered uh, uh, shop or drug shop. Don't buy medicines sold uh, like beans uh, in the market. Please don't uh, uh, do that. And if in doubt, secondly, uh, check. If you have bought a drug and you have doubt, uh, you can see the label. Uh, sometimes the vendors or the technical representative uh, will be known, call and say if this batch is from you. We are incorporating a method where you can scratch, you have, uh, you can scratch like we used to do in the old days of uh, scratch cards for airtime. And you can just reveal a code, then you call back uh, to the vendor and you say, is this a, a legitimate uh, a product. The third thing which you can do as a farmer is we are facing an epidemic. I know as farmers, I'm a farmer myself, uh, uh, we want to cut costs, but farmers have the, uh, the vice. Somebody was talking about cannibalism as a vice. We have a vice of self-diagnosis, uh, self-treatment. Please, uh, let's try to use the professionals uh, the veterinarians or animal health workers uh, to help us uh, to, uh, to to diagnose the problem because you may think the drug is the problem but you're actually mismatching a drug with the wrong uh, problem so uh, and accept things like 
uh, vaccine, sometimes we have, I don't want to go into them, you buy a vaccine, it's legit, but there is a break in quality chain and uh, things like that. As we we were very open about it from the beginning, uh, we hope we could get an opportunity uh, in depth. There are so many problems farmers may, uh, face uh, in terms of management, in terms of managing birds, uh, which cannot be elaborated here because uh, the time is short. But the catch word if a poultry farmer is discipline. Nobody gets their money and throws it on the street. Sometimes we farmers of poultry are throwing our money on the street by mismanaging the treatment of our birds. Okay, thank you very much. Well, it's it, uh, also that's related to other questions who came in and say, well, uh, I think all of you have shown on your slides that there is a sort of technical support uh, system. But the, the main question was, uh, how can you help farmers and how can you uh, educate farmers and how can you tell them that, well, what is happening at the farm? And is there, uh, let's say, also a sort of general uh, organization who can uh, uh, yeah, who, who can uh, help with this uh, extension type of services? Because otherwise you have to go to a company and so on. And well, it's just how you how can uh, farmers be uh, assisted uh, knowing well what is happening on the farm. One of the questions was well, I can give uh, chickens, uh, I can give them uh, my medicines, but if they do not respond, what I, do I have to do? What uh, well, and maybe a central extension service type of person uh, or persons could help. Okay, I don't know who would like to uh, respond to this. Uh, maybe our veterinary consultant uh, could do it. Maybe uh, Bulans. Uh, well, how uh, are you? Yeah? In 30 seconds, uh, we have other veterinarians here. Uh, in 30 seconds, uh, those of us, uh, all of us are selling something because farmers need the service. They need the product. Uh, for a poultry farmer, uh, all of us come to you and we push down your throat what we are selling. We, are, we, don't, mean, we don't mean any harm. That's what we are paid to do. And uh, the problem is we do all the best due diligence of our products, uh, even throwing in uh, uh, quality assurance. Uh, you, you saw that uh, even uh, having mobile test kits, we, we try to do this. But as businesses, just like a farmer is a business, you buy what you need. So we sell what you need. Okay, sometimes you don't need that much. We, we know that and that's what we have said. So we think this VIV, this webinar is the one place to start for you as a farmer so that you buy exactly what you need in, in management and in the value chain, uh, the value chain expert will tell you, uh, we use just in time techniques in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of procurement, the value, the value uh, chain analysis will tell you. So the farmer should buy exactly what we need. Let's not push down your throat what you don't need. And I can tell you that as people who are selling medicines, inputs, uh, services to the farmers, we don't have the money as businesses uh, to give you all the midwifing you need to move your business to the next level. And that's why we, as Viv, I'm happy that we are going to Chigali this, this, uh, this year. This is why Viv is very critical to bring together, you saw uh, Madame Diana introduced the Dutch uh, 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 embassy. That's where governments have to come in to look at the macroeconomics of it. How can a sector such as poultry be helped uh, to move forward? What farmers need, how do we push this information? Because we don't have the money as entrepreneurs to give you all the social, uh, the social good, the social knowledge you need. We can only do so much, but organizations like VIV, funded by maybe the Dutch government, maybe partnering with the Rwanda government, the Uganda government, look at this overarching 
this overarching, this 360, the helicopter view, how the policies can be uh, given that the extension worker in the village where our medicine is going is giving the support service to the farmer. So we need to work as a partnership and we think the guru will be this view, not just doing this webinar or a seminar in Shigali, but actually having that interconnection between the private sector and the governments. That is going to be a clincher for people who are farmers not to drop off uh, the gravel train. Okay, well, um, Samuel, would you like to say some words? Well, not too long, please, not too long, please. Of course, not too long. I, um, yeah. I, I, I have about two comments, of course. Um, Originally, um, extension was really with the government, being done by government. But over the time, we've seen that it's not really effective. The government doesn't have enough people to reach out to everyone. So now I see that our extension has moved uh, and advisory service has mostly moved to the private sector. And through the private sector right now, it is the, you know, the likes of people like me and Dr. Birunji representing different organizations, selling different products, mostly in suppliers that are trying as much as possible to solve this problem through educating farmers and we do it through tv through um, um, social media whatsapp groups through radio through farmer trainings physical farmer trainings have been uh, not happening now of late because of covid but that is the upper step has been there now as a way of solution i i think and and just to add a bit to what dr birunji is saying we have to think it through um, collaboration, and we can collaboration collaborate in the in the in the value chain. For example, the two as ways in which we can collaborate: can uh, farmers can come together and form groups. So you have sort of like horizon uh, vertical integration, or uh, sorry, um, not vertical, but you have them coming together collectively. To you know, the small guys coming together, forming a group. And in that group, they can be able to uh, put up their voices and, and you know, uh, even hire or at least request for some sort of um, um, uh, extension services from whoever, demanding for where they need to be educated or where they need to, to have a service in extension. That's one. The other one could also be the same players within the value chain coming together in some kind of, let's say, platform. Yeah, so you have the inputs, I mean, the the major players who are the you know the major actors and then the, the actors that are supporting the likes of ngos the even the government and 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 everybody else that is providing a service around coming together maybe routinely to talk at a platform where they can exchange views and air out what they they need and through that it's there could be possibilities for example of of saying look um we we want we can form a platform that is going to be helping on on the extension front so that you have non-biased uh information just coming and, and it's collective and it's meeting the, the needs of especially farm okay thank you uh well buland uh, i had uh, well yeah, you, you would like to say something about this subject as well but i also have to have two uh, other questions for you. Uh, you spoke about uh, mycotoxins, as far as I uh, well remember. Uh, toxin binders, I think. That wasn't what? me, I think. Oh, it was not you. Oh, that was uh, okay. Then it was the wrong question. Well, then, well, then I have one other question. You mentioned about uh, your East African, uh, let's say, uh, facilities uh, started yeah. uh, earlier this year in Tanzania and the question was whether you also uh, would do these in Uganda or uh, well uh, okay quick answer I think Tanzania is chosen as the uh, the hub let's say for East Africa that operation will be supplying eight different countries including Uganda so this is where we have you know road access to East African countries so it will be in Tanzania there is no <clears throat> plan for an investment in Uganda Okay, well then, then uh, one other question. Uh, you showed uh, all the traits you are uh, looking for uh, when, when you are uh, in your breeding uh, programs. Uh, the question was, is cannibalism also one of them? I'm not 100% sure if cannibalism is something that can be looked at a genetic uh, level. Uh, uh, 
but I know they watch the behaviors of the chickens closely when because we have very developed or progress, let's say, uh, techniques they use. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Again, it's a veterinary, uh, it's a genetic thing that you can look into, but they consider everything that they can watch. So it's a part of the development process, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, then, then I go back to Samuel, uh, because the question was on the uh, mycotoxin binders and uh, what type of toxin, uh, of toxin binders you had, uh, well, in mind and whether they were clay based. That was the question. I'm sorry that I uh, misunderstood that it was for Aviagen. Yeah, of course, um, the, 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 the toxin binders are all uh, clay based, um, smectite clay to be clear. And we have we have um, three types. So we have the basic one, which you call toxo MX. So it really just helps to bind aflatoxin. Then we have toxo XL, which, which takes on two more levels. So it, it, it will bind aflatoxin, but can also bind of the other um, uh, uh, mycotoxins. You are, you're talking of Dawn, Zia, okra toxins and the rest, but it also helps with uh, immuno, uh, helping to improve immunity and, and also to uh, um, uh, in, in, in detoxification. So we have, um, we have sort of like broken down the products depending on who we are reaching out to. So there are those that are affordable and basic for every farmer. And then there are those where we reach out to certain niches within, within uh, the farming, uh, farming community. And we try to address those other extra issues because we know mycotoxins, for example, you, you know, they, they affect immunity. They, they can cause all sorts of damages that could lead to even uh, bacterial infection taking charge or taking over. And then we want to support that. So we, we have categories and, and they're available locally in Uganda. Uh, we are educating farmers about them and, and telling them how we can match the, you know, the, the, the products can match some of the challenges that they're facing. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, uh, there was a question for Frank uh, Leiden. Well, you had a uh, very, uh, well, uh, Nice presentation on, on uh, newest technologies, on uh, latest and other ways of thinking and how to uh, start the life of the bird. So it's uh, the life is only six weeks, so uh, started early. But, and you mentioned on farm hatching. We also uh, have to have to find out whether in overfeeding would help on farm hatching. Can you give a sort of comment on that? Thank you, uh, Mr. Hu. You mean in overfeeding? You mean yes. in the egg itself? Yes. Um, it's a good question. I think it's uh, something also still in development. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it's the same effect as on farm hatching. I think the most important is that uh, it's not only the early feed and water, but beside of that, that the environment, the place where they will uh, hatch, will, where they will be placed, uh, as well, the climate conditions are also important. So. It's not only early feed and water, it's more than that. That's what I uh, think is really important. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for your uh, answer. Uh, well, I just thought that, uh, well, that also is another way of thinking on how to uh, give uh, birds an early and good start because that's the beginning of everything. Or as you said in your CV, at least it's half the work. Well, yes. uh, we have still some other questions, mainly uh, concerning the, uh, let's say, some veterinary aspects and uh, dealing with uh, administration of medicines. And uh, in the meantime, as it, uh, we, we take a little bit too much time of everybody, uh, we have to finish here. And uh, from the uh, VIV organization, the presenters will be brought in contact with the people who question, who sent in the questions. So I think on this moment, it's better that uh, we, we finish our uh, webinar. Uh, I think all of you, the presenters for your time and for the very uh, concise presentations you gave, I thank the participants uh, for their questions. And uh, it was a pleasure uh, doing this. 
And now I think we go back to uh, Diana and Diana will close this webinar and see you all in Kigali. Thank you so much, Rul, and also thank you so much uh, for the speakers for this very informative uh, session. Uh, it was great having you on board and uh, to all the attendees who were watching the last uh, hour and a half. Uh, all the questions that haven't been answered, we will uh, bring to our speakers personally. And if you would like to rewatch this uh, webinar, the recording will be available on www.poetryafricaevent.com. I would hereby like to close uh, the webinar and uh, let me wish you a nice day further. <laughs>